So, well, instead of drawing a random picture today, like the one I drew yesterday, I decided to, well, film this thing and explain, and like actually explain some science. So, yeah, this is, I actually knew about this misconception from Vertassium. Like, some, well, it was actually his video about the Quantum Academy and why he always starts with misconceptions. That some people think there, like, whenever a ball is thrown up into the air, there has to be a force acting upwards on it, and it gradually decreases over time. Therefore, gravity pulls it down and it falls onto the ground. Well, I actually had that misconception when I was little. And, well, basically now, I'll show it's wrong. So first, we have to remember that Newton's second law says F equals MA, not F equals MV. This thing is just wrong. F is not equal to MV. If an object has a constant velocity, that means it's acted on by a balanced force, well, by a pair of balanced forces. And if the object is not moving with a constant velocity, that is when it it shows there's some kind of unbalanced force acting on it. So basically, for this mis misconception, if F gradually decreases, that and like at the very top, F balances with gravity. Therefore, and this, therefore, according to a common misconception, and F equals m a, um, the acceleration should be up, because F is greater than mg in this case. Therefore, like, the ball should be accelerating up due to f equals ma. Because, as you could see, this formula gives a equals f over m. But, as we know, like, according to common sense, the ball gradually slows down and then starts speeding up in the opposite direction. It's, it, that just proves it's wrong. And, well, if that wasn't enough for you, look at the balance, the very middle here. When F equals mg, it's acted on by a balanced force. Therefore, the velocity, well, the acceleration should be zero. And, wait, balanced force, yeah, the, the acceleration should be zero. And according to um, our daily experiences, the velocity is zero. So it must pass through a point on the VT graph, and the acceleration should be balancing itself off like that. <clears throat> because, well, acceleration is the first derivative of velocity, if that makes any sense. And so, yeah, when you try to graph the VT graph, you run into trouble. First, the velocity should be somewhere around here, because I let the up direction be positive. And if the acceleration is going up, that means it should be a pretty steep slope. And then the acceleration is gradually slowing down, but it never quite reaches this point. So how do you connect this? Therefore, it's, it doesn't make sense, and well, it's wrong. I mean, it's not stupid to think of it this way. It's it's just like not scientifically speaking, like it's just not scientifically correct. And if you look at this, the VT graph is actually very easy to draw. It goes like this. It has a constant velocity, well, not constant velocity, constant acceleration because it's only acted on with one force. And this acceleration is the the very same constant we're very like a lot of people are very familiar with, 9.8 meters per second squared. And the, the VT graph is just like, it's simple to draw. And another thing to prove that this is wrong. Well, yes, think of a slinky. Well, I don't know if you guys have, well, okay. Think of a slinky attached here. Because slinky is the thing we use nowadays to measure force actually. So think of a slinky attached here. You throw the ball up. Say the slinky is always balanced on top of the ball. Will the slinky stretch? No. That means there won't be any force there. So the thing I'm getting to here is basically 
remember this graph, remember this graph, and remember f equals ma. It's pretty much it.